So, hello everybody here at Comedia. Um, so we're talking today about Comedia and Decker's Brands. Decker's Brands is an amazing company managing multiple cool lifestyle brands. And um, so I'd like to kick it off with uh, a few short remarks about Comedia. Comedia Content Cloud. We provide the content platform for uh, a lot of global and local brands in different industries. Brands, luxury, fashion, retail, manufacturing, finance, in more than 100 53 countries and more than 300 clients. People love our stuff, so we, our retention rate, renewal rate is, is more than 89%. Uh, um, we have offices in Europe, headquarters in Hamburg, then London, and here on the East Coast and West Coast, plus in Singapore with partners. We work with a lot of partners, uh, Astound, Avato, Born, Capgemini, Proficient, and many others. So if you want to have a great content experience, Comedia can help you with that. Here are some of our clients using Comedia Content Cloud to deliver iconic experiences. It's in the luxury space, uh, Hughes Netta Porter, in the jewelry space, Pandora, but also Office Depot, Ag Foods, Farfetch. We have quite a few other industries, B2B, uh, like Graybar, uh, Andritz, travel like Finnair, American Express, um, production like Jung Heinrich, Continental, T-Mobile, Ray-Ban. So in quite a few different industries, uh, this technology makes a difference when you want to tell iconic stories. So let's talk about the future. The future is something that we all basically should think about because we have to live in it. So let's put some thoughts in there. In the future, things will be pretty different. More different than we think. For example, cars will drive autonomously. This seems strange, but it's happening. And it's happening right now, right? Like the Tesla, uh, cars, they have the technology to identify red kind of lights, the, 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 the uh, passenger, the people on the street. Yesterday I learned they now have the technology to talk to people on the street. So the car starts to not just make noise, but say, hey, be careful, like, don't go there. Same thing, like um, new stuff, when you buy a car, it will be a different experience than in the past. It will be just one click away to buy a new car, even your dream car. This is a replica of a Ferrari. Um, you can buy online with one click on your mobile phone. 17,000 and you have a replica real size of this beautiful old Ferrari. However, the vision is that you can buy a real Ferrari with one click on a mobile phone. So if you just you know, scored a goal in the Champions League and you won, or you have a touchdown at Super Bowl, or you just get a big promotion and you feel like you need a Ferrari, you will have the ability to buy one with one click on your mobile phone. And that seems weird because like spending 500,000 on a mobile phone seems like something uh, you know, strange to do. The truth is there are customers who do that today. Even items with more than a million dollars are bought online on the mobile phone with, uh, uh, in, in, in today's age, actually. We have Netta Porter as a customer, and they, for their extremely important customers, they provide a service that is so personalized, so special, that you have to be invited to see even the product that they offer. So it's something that is the opposite of Amazon. Right? It's not everything is available all the time. It's, it's something you have to be invited to be able to see it, and then there's a person shopper who will take care for you to have that product. You will talk to everything digital. And if you have kids, you will already notice, for them, this technology, if it's Siri or Alexa or, or Google Home, it is natural. They basically just talk to it in multiple languages. And my kids, for example, four kids between four and nine, and they basically ask for podcasts, they, let, they, they ask for jokes, they basically uh, switch on the lights and off the lights with it, they basically in the car, they ask for music they want to hear. So it's, for them, voice interaction is normal. Actually, the same happened a few years ago with something like tablets. When you had a screen, they touched it, right? They touched it not just on the mobile phone, they touched it on the TV. And if it didn't work, it didn't react, it was broken. And now the same happens to voice. If you talk to it and it doesn't respond, they say, okay, it's broken, it doesn't work. So then new stuff will hit us faster and harder than ever before. So when you think about the world, the most disruptive force we see in the world is not technology. It takes a while for everyone to have an iPhone. It takes a while for everyone to have some new technology. But the most disruptive force is culture. It's something like this. Daryl Morey put out this tweet and deleted it shortly after. You know, he's manager in the NFL, and this tweet alone 
created a disruption, an uproar on the online because um, a lot of people in China didn't like that. So basically, they shut down the transmission of NFL in China with in kind of like a short period of time. There was a big, big kind of a debate going on. And you know, in a way, the manager of the NFL, they, they apologized for it. That, however, was a big, big topic for the American side of the business. Hey, why do you apologize? Like, like we are about free speech, we are about freedom. And, and so in a way, there was this culture clash that's happened that put, with a deleted tweet, the business, a multi-billion dollar business, at risk within, out of nowhere, within seconds. And that will happen more and more so. So what we see, and you can see it here in New York more than, than ever, is that surfaces, all surfaces turn to smart screens. So when you're here on the, on the show, you can walk around. There are more and more surfaces that have kind of like content on there that even might react to you. It looks like this, you know, same in Times Square, more and more parts of the city. It looks like this in retail or like this. So you will have screens. The, the latest stuff that I saw from, from Samsung, the, the wall at, uh, at the CBS, it was amazing, right? To see uh, at the CES show, to see how you can base gigantic screens so sharp and bright and so intense with their colors. It's it's really like better than life. Right? It's, it's like it's it's amazing. It's mind blowing. That will happen, and you will happen screens that not just show you something; they will react to you. This screen, for example, it's not just showing you content and everyone the same. It reacts to the people in front of it. So it knows how old you are, like if you have glasses, the colors you wear, and it will react to it and basically provide you with the interesting part of it. Plus language. We live in a global world and with all the traveling, especially in places like New York, the language that you speak is still something very special, very kind of like important. And however, it's not always English, right? It's like even in Germany, it's 25% of the people have a, a migra migration background. So they speak another language that they really like because this was their mother tongue. And what if we just provide the right language for everybody? Maybe your language is the right one and you have the, wherever you go, they should switch to, China, to, to Cantonese if you're from China and not just basically assume that you speak English. Escalating customer expectations will put tremendous pressure on organizations. And we've seen that in the retail space and the online space with delivery times. So a few years ago, it was really okay to have it delivered within the next week. Then it was two day delivery, and then it was one day delivery. Now it's, it's with Amazon, it's prime now, one hour delivery for thousands of products. I remember a few years back that the one hour thing happened in San Francisco for shirts. You could order a new shirt in your size in one hour. There was a, a biker coming by and dropping it off, and it was great, right? Then you basically put some you know, coffee on your, on your shirt and you need a new one. Mm -hmm. Now, this becomes the new norm. So the crazy part is that you get used to it quickly, one day is not enough. It's like, what? I have to wait until tomorrow? That's wrong? That's like, it doesn't feel good. So this will be the new norm that you have something instant. And suddenly, people in other industries expect the same. So if you want it or not, the expectations of customers will put pressure on your business. The big story here is the future is now. All the stuff that I showed you is not like the future. It is the, the reality today that people do in some places. And when you go to China and, and other places, it's even better, right? It's like the, the amount of stuff you can do with your phone, you basically pay with your face. That's all there today, and the future will be even more of that. So the big question, therefore, for brands and retailers is, are you ready? Are you set up for a world that is like that? Are you agile enough to basically test ideas? Are you agile enough to accept that there are new shifting requirements and that you have to change? You can't basically do the same thing just because it worked last year. The expectations of customers and all the industry will change dramatically. And are you ready to move at the speed of culture? Because if you do something that seems okay today, and the society says, because there's Greta Thunberg, hey, we don't like this anymore, we don't like CO2, so like, do something. If you're not able to react, you have a problem. Last year, one of the big, biggest moves for a brand that I noticed was um, uh, Colin Kaepernick being the face of the Nike Just Do It campaign. Like, that was a bold move to basically be part of this conversation, the Black Lives Matter conversation, and to have an opinion. And it was bold and it made Nike very relevant for the young audience. But it was, yeah, it was overdue in a way because not doing that at some point in time might have been a risk. And so moving at the speed of culture, not that many companies do it well. 
Some do it wonderfully well and, and shine. And I'm glad today I have Brian here, Brian Fortier from Degas Brands. Degas Brands for us is a brand that we are amazed with the speed and agility that this organization has. And uh, Brian, I'm, I'm glad that you have, you're here to share your story. Thank you. Wow. Please. Thank you, Soren. I really appreciate it and uh, appreciate the honor of taking some time and walking you guys through the Decker's brand story. Um, so my name is Brian Fortier. I'm the Senior Digital Technology Manager for Decker's brand, Brands. And uh, for those of you that do not know Decker's Brands, uh, Decker's Brands is made up of multiple different shoe uh, brands. Um, Polka 1-1, which I'm going to get into and kind of share the success of us using the core media uh, CMS. Uh, Teva, Sanuk, UGG, which I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with UGG, and Kulabura by UGG, which is a, a newer brand for us. So I'm going to walk you guys through just the power and speed of implementation that we were able to do uh, working with the core media team and using our um, engineers. Uh, we were able to implement uh, the core media platform starting in July of 2018 uh, when, we, when we went to our stakeholders and we went to core media and said, we're going to have this live before peak. Everybody was like, whoa, that's a pretty aggressive timeline, but we saw that going into peak of last year, how powerful it would have been or was to have this um, in our back pockets to be able to turn around content, turn around home pages as quickly as we was able to do it. Uh, we launched our first home page on August 30th, 2018, which was about a total implementation, the entire process of about six weeks from start to finish. Uh, since then, we have over 40 unique templates that we share across all of the brands and we're starting to share globally as well uh, with dozens of variations. And, and at this point, dozens is not doing it the true justice. I mean, we probably have anywhere from 150 to 200 different variations that we can use uh, across brands, across templates. So where are we using this tool? We started in North America. Uh, it is on all of our, plat or on all of our brands um, in US and in Canada. We are now scaling to Europe as well uh, going through a the, the latest update for for core media so we're going through um, the versioning update to be on the latest version for core media uh, we're also going through a, a cartridge update for um, for the platform as well so what was our goal with selecting core media and choosing them um, as our, our CMS tool relevancy in the moment we felt that the tool the interface was very easy to use uh, we were able to be a global company be able to share one template to where we can start a design in North America, add our call to actions to it, and then send it off to our Europe team, and then they're able to localize it, and we still have the same look and feel, but just the translations and the, the wording is different. Speed to market uh, was another one. Prove, uh, process improvements, and this is really you know where we get into being able to share the templates across regions, I mean, I remember in the past when we were, you know, shipping thumb drives and sharing content all different ways. This has one centralized locate, location for all of our, our, um, our packages. Uh, decreasing developer dependencies. And this one is a really important one that I don't think people really factor in. So our team has content developers um, that were writing all of our uh, homepage flips in, in HTML. Uh, we were able to now ship them away from doing boring web content development and shifting them into more of a stretch developer two role, being able to create template designs, um, really developing their career versus just doing monogamous HTML work. So now I would like to share kind of one of our, our biggest uh, stories that we had from this past year. Uh, it was a, a launch of a, of a Hoka shoe called the Carbon X. This was one of our biggest marketing campaigns that we had last year. We, we co-hosted a, a, um, an ultra marathon event with a, a gentleman called, uh, or named Jim Wamsley. Uh, he's an ultra marathoner and he set out to break the 500 mile record coming out of Sacramento. And he was able to make that barrier in less than five hours. Uh, I believe it was four hours and 50 minutes. The prior record to that was set in 1984. So that's how long it took for someone else to break this. Uh, we hosted this, a 12 hour live stream on our homepage using Core Media. 
We also had three home pages that we were able to switch, already queued up, ready to go uh, in less than 12 hours during the race. We had six landing pages where we were able to, in real time, be able to change the status, the pace, and provide race updates. And during that time, we had 650 visitors to the site checking in the status of the race. This is just some renderings of our homepage. So you'll see each of our iconic brands and what those homepage uh, renderings look like using the Core Media uh, tool. And some of the other big successes that we've seen since we've lost launch has been the blog visit visits where we've seen a higher average, average order value. Uh, we have been able to convert higher. Uh, we're now going into our PDP and our PLP using the Core Media templates to where we can have merchandise tiles, both in our, um, our PLP, our PDP, and also we're now using it for our header, our footer, our categories. So it's just been an overall great experience. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Yeah. Let me start with one. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I think so. So it, um, the one thing that I found fascinating is that you basically were able to turn your online store into something else, more like a media place, exactly, where yeah. you basically publish the live stream and yeah. had the results. Yeah. So you turned into an entertainment company in a way. Yeah. So it, it reminds me of Elon Musk, because what he does with Tesla is he's entertaining us every day. Yeah. So in a way, this entertaining part, this becoming part of the conversation, is a different yeah. kind of marketing. Yeah, it was, and it was very relevant. I mean, all of our you know, uh, loyalists to Hoka are runners themselves, whether it's ultra marathon, marathon, and for, for them to be able to come to our site, because it's not an event that is hosted on ESPN or all these other places, but it definitely gave our audience a, a, a relevant place to go right. and view the, the race results so in the, real time. It was really relevant content that people desired to have. Absolutely. And you but then the, the step from there to buying something was immediate because it was your online store, yeah. right? It uh -huh. was like yes. right there. Yeah. So no. this, this claim that I had there, this idea of that brands move faster, have to move faster to be in touch with culture, mm -hmm. would you subscribe to that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we try to do every day. I mean, we, we're trying to move at the speed of our customer. Yeah, that's great. So, and this idea of bringing that experience into the physical world, from your online stores into your yes, physical store. Yeah. Or what I could see basically for an event, you might have some pop-up store in yeah. the event and basically have content there. Is that yeah. an idea you, you think? Yeah, I think especially for our UGG, which is an I iconic brand, and to be able to show relevant content in real time yeah. in our stores would, would definitely be something that is, uh, yeah. it would be a win. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, the other story that I found fascinating is that with UGG Boots, that you have this perception that the day of the first snow in the zip code that you live in, that that makes a big difference of what you're promoting, right? Yeah, absolutely. Personalization, you know, it, it's, a, it's a buzzword, but definitely with UGG being, you know, a winter product, you know, being able to, to show different content, content that is in California to what is in Chicago or New York is yeah. definitely very valuable and, and a much better customer experience for our customers. Right. But you need content for that again, right? You need absolutely. Basically yes. The, yeah. And, and uh, different target audiences. Is that something like segmentation where you're working on that you have even more content for different audiences? Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah, it's great. Mm. So, and something you basically would wish for for the next year, 2020, for this year? Well, I think that you know, for us, um, the biggest win is going to be global. You know, being able to scale this product, uh, be able to share that content across all regions, and having that consistency across all. And not only that, but you know, we're doing the work in North America, and to be able to share that and not have to duplicate it in, in Europe and then duplicate it again in Japan, for us, you know, it, it, that's definitely a game changer. That's interesting. Yeah, we have another customer, Pandora who basically did through iterations, right? The first one, they introduced Comedia to make their, their site more attractive, right? Their mm -hmm. store, same as you. But then the second phase was, they changed their marketing setup. So they said, okay, we have one person who does all the translations for the globe yeah. with an AI automatically, and we have basically all the content and all the languages for all the countries. Yeah. So that enabled them to move much faster locally, ah, but that also enabled them now to basically have every product in every language. So even this idea of coming to a store in New York as a Japanese kind of yeah. group, you could switch the store if you wanted. Yeah, so that's amazing. That that's, that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you absolutely. so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.